Oh, uh, oh no, 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 no. I cannot talk to well, you. You, you are impossible. This is why we are where we are right now. You know, I don't want oh to do God. this any bitch. longer. No, what? I, you called me a bitch? Yes, I did, well, because I that's am, the truth. Well, this is why we are where we are right now. Oh, that and isn't why we're here. You know we're what? here I because am you not don't listen to me. I'm not going to deal with a narcissist like you. Oh, you. Did you call me a narcissist? Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? We, we haven't solved the problem with the kids. Last time we were talking, you would not listen to me. And entire time, no, you just no, never listen to me. No, it's always no, your no, way or the highway. It's, not that's not going to happen exactly. because no, no. I, this time, I, I'm putting I'm my foot you, down do and anymore. I have to do I, this I for the kids, this for anymore. me, it's more for my insanity no, because no, I, I can't do this. No, I'm just stressed out no, because you're no, never around. No. You're just a narcissist. Oh, I'm that's a it. narcissist. You're a narcissist. You're a liar. I'm a narcissist. Yes, you Li are. No, no, you're the liar. No, I'm not. You're the liar. You're lying to me all the time. Oh, my God. You're so dumb. Yeah. I do not want to deal with you. That's it. <laughs> I'm dumb. Usually, whenever people come to divorce mediation, there are five issues that they typically need to mediate. They may not need all five, but the five general issues are co-parenting plan, child support, alimony, also known as spousal support, what to do with the marital home, and then how to divide up assets and debts if they're not going to be split 50-50. So welcome. Thank you for coming to mediation today. Um, I'm going to do my general mediator's introduction. So in the event that you find that I'm saying things that you're like, oh, I wouldn't do that, it's something that I just tell everyone. So number one, the mediation is confidential. And if we have agreements, I will list them out and give you a memorandum of understanding at the end of the mediation session. Now, I have some general guidelines that I would like everyone to follow during the course of the mediation. Number one, the biggest rule being please do not interrupt each other. Um, it is very harmful to the communication. So if you are interrupting, I will ask you to stop. I also ask that you keep your voice at a level um, tone as well as not raise your voice, don't yell or scream. Also, please do not call each other names. Please also do not disparage one another. And if you can, just stay calm during the entire time. Now, please also do not use the words lie, liar, or lying. In the event that you feel like the other person is saying something that is not true, you should have something to take notes with. You can jot a note for yourself and you'll have plenty of time to correct that. And instead of saying lie, liar, or lying, please use the phrase, I have a different perspective. Now, at any point in time, I may pull you into a separate room to have a discussion. This might happen because there's an impasse and I want to help you get past the impasse. This also might happen because the emotions are getting a little too high in the room. Also, if you feel like you're getting too emotional, you're feeling frustrated, angry, annoyed, um, threatened, anything like that, you may please say to me, Alice, I need to speak to you privately, and then we can go into a private caucus. Everything that's in that caucus is confidential to this joint session, meaning whatever you tell me in the private room, I will not bring back out to the other party unless you give me permission to do so. Any questions? No, that sounds good. No. Okay. So since Kavita, you reached out to me first to mediate, I would love to hear um, on the agenda, I believe we have a move away request from yes. you. Yes. So if you could begin and then we'll go from there. And then Richard, what I would like for you to do is uh, listen carefully. There may be times while I will ask you what it is that you heard before I, give you a chance to respond, okay? Okay. All right, any questions about the process? Uh, no, it's clear. No, no, I don't think so. Okay, great, all right, Kavita. So, um, you know, I need help, and um, the best thing to do for me and for the kids is to move to the Bay Area because I need that help, you know? My parents are there, my family are there, and it's just gonna be just easier for me and for the kids. Would the, would Hang on one second, Richard, okay? I'll right. give you a chance to uh, okay. respond in a moment. Yeah, so, um, you know, the kids are in sports and they need, you know, they both have games sometime at the same time, so I won't be able to do that. 
um, drive them both, and then he's not around. Even even if we were, you know, in LA, he's he's never around because he's always working. So I need that extra help from my parents. Mm -hmm. So moving to Bay Area is the best thing to do. The way that I make sure that people are hearing each other and they are communicating without misunderstandings is by engaging them to use their active listening skills. And I do that by asking people to repeat what it is that they heard. This is very critical because although people look like they're listening, they actually might be thinking about the response. They might be thinking about their emotions and their emotional response to what is happening from the other side of the table. And for these reasons, their listening is diminished. And so I will use this particular technique in order to make sure that both parties are listening. Richard, if you could, before we begin, let me know what it is that you heard from Kavita. Well, what I heard is that she wants us to live in different cities. She wants to move, uh, you know, up to the Bay Area because her family is there. Uh, and of course, she'd be bringing the kids with her. One of the things she said that really kind of rub, kind of confuses me a little bit. She said one of the things that is that is a problem for her is that because of my acting, I'm never around. What makes her think that if she moves away to the Bay Area and we're in different cities, that I'm going to be around more? I'm going to be around even less. I can't be traveling up and back and forth between the Bay Area and in Southern California all the time. Okay, uh, hold on. I just want to know what, what you heard, and then we can go into your uh, response. Okay, well, that's what I heard, that she wants to move to the Bay Area. She wants to take the kids with her. Uh, I, that's, that's not going to work. It's not going to work for me. Okay, and then hang on one minute. Kavita, is that everything you said? Did he get everything? Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to move to Bay Area. Th I think that's... That's it. I know he's going kind of off. Okay, the but he but he got he heard everything you said, right? Yes. Okay. Now, Richard, if you could please respond to what Kavita said, that'd be great. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I I don't think that the solution is going to work for me. I mean, I understand that she wants to be in the Bay Area because her family is there. That's not unreasonable, but. It's also true that I can't travel back and forth to the Bay Area between the Bay Area and Los Angeles all the time because I have I have to be in LA in order to be able to pursue my uh, business of you know my career as an actor. Uh, I really think that it would be better if we both lived in the same city, and I certainly can't move to the Bay Area when she does so that she will see me more often or so that I get to see the kids more often. I, you know, we're, we're both living in, in, in Southern California and I don't feel like I see the kids as much as I want to now or as much as it's good for them. You know, they're both, they're both growing boys. They need their father's presence. And if she moves to the Bay Area, then I'm going to see them even less. And I don't think it's going to be good for the kids. Okay. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. Whenever there is an impasse, one of the strategies that I employ is the caucus session. What this means is that I speak with each party privately so that they can express more of what they're thinking and feeling than they could when the other party was in the room with them. So I'm going to ask both of you uh, to caucus for the moment because we are at a bit of an impasse. And so what that means is that I will speak to you privately and then I'll come back and speak to you privately. And I will go back and forth. Sometimes this is called shuttle diplomacy. And yeah. then um, once you both feel comfortable coming back to a joint session, that is when we will do so, okay? So first I'd like to speak with Richard. Frequently, I notice that people get very emotional and one of the things that happens when people are getting emotional is that their amygdala is hijacking their logical and reasoning part of their brain. So if you are in a conversation and you are feeling that way, you actually cannot hear the other person, you cannot solve the problem, and you cannot communicate clearly. So I bring people into a session so that they can sort of vent to me whatever it is that is bothering them, that is making them upset, and hopefully bring their amygdala back down so that they can start to think again. 
So Richard, talk to me about what's happening with you. Uh, you know, this is just very frustrating. She always brings up the same issues that we've already talked about and that I've told her won't work for me, and she keeps insisting on the same things. I mean, moving up to the Bay Area, that's not gonna work. How could she possibly think that that could work? I just, I don't know, I just don't get it. I'm trying to keep my cool, but it's really, really hard for me to do that. Yeah, I understand it's really, really frustrating to deal with something, especially when you feel like your children might move far away from you. Exactly, I mean, that's a huge issue. So what I do is I try to acknowledge their feelings by mirroring the things that they are saying so that they feel heard and they feel understood. And then I move towards interest-based negotiating. What I would like for you to do while I go speak to Kavita is I would like for you to think about how can we solve for both issues, for you to be able to see your children on a regular basis and for Kavita to somehow be near family so that she can have help taking care of the children, okay? Uh, okay. I'll give you some time to think about it, and then I'll go talk to Kavita, and when I come back, I'd like to hear some of your ideas. Okay, I'll think about it, try to come up with some solutions. Great, thanks. So I just want to remind you that this caucus is confidential, so anything you tell me will remain confidential. I will not go and tell Richard. I will only tell him anything that you let me tell him, okay? So I'd like to hear sort of what is happening with you right now. Um, I'm just frustrated. Um, it's just, you know, sad because I, you know, I didn't think this was going to happen, but it is happening. So, um, you know, moving to the Bay Area would help me a lot because throughout our marriage, he always worked. There was never a time to where, oh, I'll be home at this time. And it was always just me left alone, you know, to um, take care of the kids. But now that the kids are older, you know, they are, uh, you know, have sports, you know, different sports, different time. Sometimes you have to go out of town. So it just makes sense to me that, you know, I move to the Bay Area or we move to the Bay Area. That way my, my family can help out because, you know, that's the only way and it's best for everyone. And I'm, you know, I'm just kind of losing my mind because I am always so busy. Right, so I understand it's very, very difficult to try to raise your kids down in Los Angeles and that you'd like to be closer to your family. Mm -hmm. So what I would like for you to do is um, spend a few moments thinking about how you could resolve both goals. The mm -hmm. goal of being closer to your family so that they can help you as well as making sure that Richard also has a chance to be able to see the kids on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So while I go speak to him, if you can think about that, that would be great. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. When the parties feel like they have sufficiently calmed down and are feeling more neutral, that is when I ask both of them to come back to a joint session. So the only time I come back to a joint session is when I get mutual agreement to do that from both sides. So Richard and Kavita, um, we are here together because both of you have thought about some potential uh, outcomes or solutions for the issue where someone would like to move away to have family help as well as someone would like to um, have the kids closer. So I'd like to see if you could offer some solutions to Richard that you know, uh, meets both of those goals? I can try. Okay. So um, I think that I can help, you know, resolve this problem to where the kids, you know, get to see their father. Um, I'm willing to, um, you know, bring the kids to you when you have a few days off. That way you're not traveling uh, too much. I can bring them for the weekend and then you get to spend some time with the kids and provided that they don't have games, you know. Uh, right. Okay. And then Richard, what are some of your ideas? Uh, well, I thought about it and I think that one of the things we might want to consider that I, I hope would work for both of us uh, is that uh, if uh, Kavita needs to move to the Bay Area, and I understand why that's important to her and how it would be helpful, uh, then maybe we could arrange the uh, visitation so that I could spend a little bit more time with the kids. She could bring them down to Southern California uh, uh, 
for a weekend here and there on maybe a regular schedule. Uh, I would even be willing to pay for half of her airfare uh, to fly down so that she doesn't have to take on that entire financial burden. Uh, and uh, that would also give her family a break. Uh, and it would give me an opportunity to spend a little bit more time with the boys. One of the strategies that I employ in order to get people to an agreement is instead of pitting person against person, is that I bring both people to the same side of the fence and the issue is what is on the other side of the fence. So then they have to work collaboratively to problem solve and get to an amicable solution. As a reminder, I usually allow people to ask for a caucus if they are feeling too stressed out to be able to respond appropriately. So today, I believe the topic at hand is alimony, and I believe that you had some thoughts around that. So if you'd like to share that with us, that would be great. And Kavita, I will ask you to respond, actually re um, repeat back what you heard, and then respond once he is completed, okay? Okay. Well, you know, this is, this is a really sticky issue for us. I, I understand that, uh, you know, I understand that the uh, amount of alimony that uh, she's receiving is not really covering all of her expenses. Unfortunately, as a working actor, I can't always depend on having the same amount of money coming in from, you know, from month to month. Uh, and the amount that I'm giving her now, which I think is what, $1,200 or something like that, I, it's impossible for me to budget for more. I, the money isn't there. You know, I mean, I appreciate that she needs more, but she needs to appreciate that I can't, I don't, I can't give her what I don't have to give her. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, honestly, I, I don't know where you think the money, the extra money is going to come from. Okay. All right. Hang on one second. So, Kavita, um, I would like to hear what it is that you heard from Richard. Um, yeah, he wants to give me no more than $1,200 in this. Can we just talk, please? Okay. So, Kavita's asking for a private session, so right. I will go and speak with her, and then if you'd like to speak privately to me as well, I'll come back to you, okay? All right, fine. Thank you. It's very critical for the mediator to have a calm demeanor. Energy is contagious, and so if I bring anxious energy or excited energy, it will transfer to the parties. It will make them feel how I am feeling. So what I try to do is I try to anchor the emotional tone of the conversation by remaining calm, having a soothing voice, so that they also start to feel that way. Okay, congratulations to both of you. You do have an agreement. Um, I've drafted the memorandum of understanding. You can each sign it and then you'll, I will make a copy for each of you, okay? So if you wanna go ahead and take a look at that and then go ahead and sign right there. And then Richard, you can sign right there. <clears throat> Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you.